um, uh, where you know we weren't around people and shit like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're fucking we're recording. So are we turning the labels to? Nah, nah, I've noticed that. Like, you don't give a fuck. Yeah. If anything, if some people do actually do. Yeah, that. I mean that. That's the thing. Like, I'm always interested, especially with, like. I mean, fuck it, we're recording now anyway, so I might as well just start. That's but, fucking flat now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for people that don't know, uh, we've had a a beer spillage. We're not even started drinking yet. It just had to be me, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> it was the bottle opener, right? It was a cool accident, and then it just went badoosh. But um. Pretty cool. Uh, and now it's flat <laughs> but uh so yeah the end of 2022 um we were literally just about to get on to something there and it's complete oh yeah the pub uh, like not going to the pub as much and stuff like that and not going out as much like obviously i like, for me I th- anyway like i kind of feel like it's it's been as a result of what's happened the last couple of years just because you've been like forced out of it really because it's mm. not they've not been open as much and things of that nature that I've just kind of, when everything did reopen, it was almost like when like I went out, it was more like, not uncomfortable in the sense of like, people would be like, oh, no one's wearing masks or anything of that nature. It was more just like, whoa, like there's people again. Like there's like all this kind of stuff that was taken away for a couple of years. But I, I went to the windswept tap room a few weeks ago. That actually, that place is actually okay. Very, very, um, not cramp, but if there was a lot of people there, I would imagine it would get like like really yeah. too close for comfort straight away. But uh, I like I like those kind of chilled out places, you know. Maybe not not so much the the young team places of, we've discussed before with certain establishments. But um, <laughs> it's the end of twenty twenty two. Fucking hell, it is flown flown by. Yeah, I, was, I don't know. <laughs> oh man, you know what? See, when the ice and everything fucked up Saturday, because Paul was meant to be here as well, unfortunately can't be here today, uh, I, w- I was thinking the benefit of it just being us two was that it will be a bit of a time saver. If I don't have to do the multicam, it'll just be the two slides, right? And I was thinking, oh my God, this is going to be so easy. No cuts, just render it. And do the- oh, you can't outrun your demons there. But, um, no, you can't. It's uh, it's the end of 2022, mate. It's, I mean, fucking hell, it was when... This is the quickest year that like I've actually noticed it, but like I know everyone says that every year, but it definitely feels like this it's, is just. Nah, it feels like this is just gonna been this flown past. Yeah, I don't know. I can remember it being Christmas last year, right? And that Beatles documentary just dropped. And I'd watched it like all the time, and I'm still watching it all the time. <laughs> but it feels like I've been watching it for a year. It does not feel like a fucking year. Yeah, I know. And it's like well. It's th- this time last year, my holidays got destroyed mm. as my mum got COVID and then mm. I had to isolate me getting COVID. <laughs> and uh, you actually mentioned to me uh, just after we filmed uh, the last one of these that we did that you've, you've had COVID recently. So Yeah, I forgot to how, mention how, that. How yeah. was that? Was it was it brutal? Was it okay? I was f- oh, actually all right. Mm-hmm. I had like pretty much all the symptoms, but I wasn't dying with it if you know what yeah, I mean. like yeah, a lot yeah. of people were in bed they couldn't get out of their bed and all that sort of stuff no nah, i wasn't in that position i was actually all right and then being quite vulnerable i suppose you know with like my breathing and all that sort of stuff mm-hmm. i thought fuck yeah, yeah, yeah you know what i mean but i was all right i was i, I don't know i was I, I mean i'd lost my taste my sense of smile yeah that never happened to me i was that weirded sucked. out by that uh. well i mean i could smell like it was weird i had this weird smell in my nose for mm-hmm. like a week or something and it was like, it was weird because my dad got COVID and then like a day later I got it. Hmm. So like all the symptoms he would get, say on the Monday, I would get it on the Tuesday. So like I was just watching what was about to yeah, happen. Yeah, you were me. seeing your future play. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. So I was like, <laughs> yes, this is great. Because if my dad's in a bad position, I know I'm fucked. Yeah. <laughs> so like, I was just like, but nah, he was, he was all right as well. He was... I think it was like the first couple of days was probably the worst for him. Yeah. Mm. But like for me, it was pretty much the same the whole way through. Yeah. I mean, when <clears throat> when my mum got it, right, she was ill for like a day and then she was better. And that made me like think, oh, this is something different. Because whenever my mum gets like the cold all the time mm. and it plays out like most illnesses do, it's there for a week, it has a peak point and it goes down again. So that's why I said like, go get tested. And last Christmas, all the tests and things were like all over the place. You couldn't really get, even when we got one for when we all actually did have it, they only sent three out of the four because they just didn't have enough. Um, and she fainted 
And I like I was like, you know, that before going to work or something like that. And then she had it and I was like, oh, like I just finished work that day and stuff. I was like looking for two weeks off. You know, we had just done, um, because we did last year's one via Zoom because obviously yeah. I was like, look, my mum might have COVID. So That's right, let's, yeah. let's not like risk it. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what thing's going to mess up Sesh cast next year if, <clears> if this <throat> just gets blown to Kingdom Come or something like some kind of air, <laughs> like some kind of accident. But uh, uh, so I, so when she like got, I was like, because I, I just missed it the week before, like Lugs had had like a party at the football club mm. and I think like seven people there had tested positive. Jesus. And like, I was, I thought I was like immune to this at this point. Cause yeah, like, cause I, yeah. I'd been around all the people yeah, yeah. with that and I was, I was aware that I knew I was going to get it soon if I hadn't had it already, but I just didn't want to get it. So I had to isolate. I was like, let it go to January. Let me get it in January. Then I don't have to go back to work for an extra two weeks and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah. And then when I tested positive on Boxing Day, I kind of, I wasn't like worried, but like you get a bit freaked out because like you hear so much, you heard so much about it it's on not the news. No, it's, and- it's the not knowing. Exactly. Yeah, how yeah. you are going to react to it, right? Mm-hmm. I was the same. I was just like, like my, my dad, I had like symptoms, but like I didn't test. So if I don't test, I won't know. So yeah, I was, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but I was like still like feeling okay enough to, like, mm-hmm. to get up out of bed and all that sort of shit. And then my dad was like, my mom was like, oh, you better test because your dad's yeah, got yeah. it. I was like, if dad's got it, I've got it. Yeah, yeah My yeah. symptoms are the same as his. So I was, it's a point. Yeah, exactly. And just wasted a test. And she was like, do a test. Mm-hmm. It's like, for fuck's sake. All right, okay. So I did a test. Boom. One of the strongest lines I've ever fucking seen. Like, like crazy strong. Like stronger than my dad's. He had a real strong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't know if the strength of the line means something. Yeah, it is weird because like as, as mine went away, it <coughs> faded, which is strange. Like, I don't know yeah. how that works, but I guess it's maybe to do with the amount of particles or something that's maybe within your body at the time. I was 14 days mm-hmm. before I tested negative. Actually, even probably more because... <laughs> On the 14th day I tested, it looked like a negative test, right? And then like an hour later, I went back just to check it. And I had a fuck, a real faint, faint line that you could only see in the light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was weird, but like, ah, it was a real strong line. Yeah, I mean, just <coughs> I was like, I was doing one every day at the start of January. Like, when the fuck can I get out of here? Because I was like, I need to claim my holidays back because I've got brain fog, so I forgot my work password. Yeah. So I spent the whole holidays like really anxiety ridden like i'm gonna be robbed in my holiday here you know what i mean because i can't get in touch with my work to tell them that i've got covid and then it all worked itself out eventually but like i mean i didn't have symptoms for like three days and then all of a sudden i had like the worst headache i've ever experienced for four hours and then it just vanished so it is strange how it affects different people differently like the rest of my <coughs> house got the no taste no smell when i just had like a lump in my throat and a block nose after the headache and then it was just I know. So I was like, but yeah. I said to you as well, like I've, I've done one of those antibody tests recently and apparently mm-hmm. like the antibodies are that strong. I must have had it again recently. Yeah. So I did have a bit of congestion back in September, but like I didn't think it was nah. anything, you know. But I suppose we're in like a stage now where it isn't as what it once was. Do you know what I mean? I when think it first be- started. Yeah, like with all the, I mean, the vaccines, whether you, you know, think the vaccines are. Yeah, whether you're on, yeah. <laughs> whether, I mean, doesn't matter. Like, but like what, like, you know, I think people are a little bit more sort of, they kind of, they're not as scared as they used no, to be. No, exactly, yeah. You kind of have an idea what to expect from yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, people have died and stuff like that, but that was when we had no idea what it was. This was this sort of fucking yeah. crazy virus that... First time people's bodies have been exposed to it and you things of that nature. Yeah, and you didn't, you had no idea how to fight it. Mm-hmm. Um, if these, uh, you know, if these vaccines work, then... Who knows? Yeah, exactly. There's it's, been a lot of contention about that <laughs> over the... Yeah. I mean, but it's funny because last, last time I was here, we were speaking and not once did we mention COVID, COVID on, yeah, on, on air. Right? An achievement. Never had mentioned COVID in the last year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like COVID had been probably been on every single Yeah, well, th- that was the thing that like really confused me about the COVID misinformation <laughs> things, right? Because the COVID uh, Spotify misinformation tag or whatever that goes along with episodes and um, obviously started because of the stuff that happened with joe rogan and having those people on that they mm. were like right this is how we're going to like whatever right yeah. but like i swear we must have went on a 10 episode run of having one of those things right but Most it wasn't likely. like we were like saying oh it's not real or whatever or what any kind of 
misinformation it was it was just picking up in our words covid so mm-hmm. during the pandemic that yeah. would get flagged yeah yeah but then we um when we had a uh, aiden steven on back in april right um uh lee said oh don't get Aiden started on covid and uh aiden, i went oh covid's a joke and we didn't get one yeah so it was like that that was like you know what i mean under their yeah. standards that would have been one that would have been flagged, one that but they didn't do flagged. it so that's weird how he was on in april Think yeah. about how far back. Yeah, was. I know it's mad. Uh, it's it, I remember when you got the gloves and yeah, and then we had to got them framed. I, I need to. We're getting Lee is sorting out a sticker for the wall, so I'm gonna have to maybe mess with the camera angles a bit so that we've got the actual banner on the wall. We need a shelf up there as well. Yeah, it'd be cool. But uh, we might be getting a new table as well. We've got some new chairs. There are more on the way. Yeah, no. Shout true. out to Lee for keeping the constant grind of uh, <laughs> renovations and innovations going on here. But um, I bring my own chair. Yeah. So. <laughs> but here, it's, it's. Do you know what? Do you know what is one thing that I, I've, I meant to say this to you last time. There is one thing that makes podcasting so easy with you, right? And it is obviously we get on, of course. But I mean, from a technical standpoint, and I think it is because you do music. Is mm. that you realise the the mic positioning technique? Yeah. Well, well, I made a mistake on the first one. I was. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Fuck! I sat like this. Yeah, far yeah, back, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I missed like everything I had to say about music, mm-hmm. and I was actually going to say, yeah, I want to come on and talk about music again because mm-hmm. I fucked it up that so that bad. Jamie was all right. He spoke into the mic, but I was like, but I had the, the, the shittier mic stand. I mean, it's much easier to do <coughs> with these things. Yeah, um, the arms are so much better. Yeah, and uh, I mean, I'm still working on Paul. Like he's getting better at it, but I still have to keep reminding. I've taught Lee very well, um, but it is like one of those things. It might it must sound like a like a really pathetic gripe, but like when I'm like mm. listening to it back, I can notice straight away. It's I can uh, yeah I can imagine it's mm-hmm. annoying. And then obviously, like, back when you did that episode that you're referencing there when you and uh, Jamie came on, I was, like, obviously just starting out. So there was, like, things that, like, oh, I kind of had to learn from yeah. making mistakes. Um, and that's kind of how you get better at I mean, even anything. to this day, you see Rogan. Yeah, exactly. Go move, come to your mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, does it all guests. the time. Well, that's the I've thing. I've seen him like, do it all the time. People that aren't used to having, like, mics in their face will tend to, like, go back there. And i think in like a normal room because these mics are quite good at rejecting like noise mm. but in a room like this it's quite reverberance echoey and i take most of that out a lot of the time and I, like there's like things that you can do to like kind of make it sound like you're more pulled into the mic and whatever but um it can only go so far right without degrading the yeah. actual audio yeah um but you know I, I always feel like a bit of a dick when i do it as well like, no you shouldn't Cause especially like guests because like obviously they're giving us an hour of their time or something and i'm like can you just pull that <laughs> you know like yeah. well it's like if you don't say it mm-hmm. they ain't gonna fucking hear themselves exactly, back yeah, so yeah. that's the thing like i mean you know like when it time comes to the time where i start playing live music i think that first episode taught me mm-hmm. keep the fucking microphone to your face or it's gonna sound like shit yeah mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to th- oh, it's, it's easy I done, always though, do it. It's yeah. like easy done. It's just natural because podcasting is obviously, it's not meant to be like, I mean, it is meant to be serious, but it's not meant to be like proper radio when you're like meant nah, to like, it's a, not just chill and just have a just conversation. Just having a conversation like you'd be having a pub or something like that, you know? Exactly. So uh, every episode I'm on, I always remember to put the mic right to right here close so I know. But like I've noticed it with other musicians as well, like when we had um, Tom Morrison uh, he did the same, Scott Ramsey, last mm. year and stuff like that. So it's, I, I feel comfortable with musicians come on because I was like, I know that I'm not going to have to like uh, tell them what to do or anything no. uh, with it and stuff like that. And it obviously brings my anxiety down a little bit through through doing stuff like this. But I, I, I mean, I don't get anxiety from doing this now. Like I was thinking to myself, um, uh, the, the documentary released uh, last Friday, right? And it's uh, been received pretty well. Like it's been viewed five thousand times on Facebook and uh, things of that nature, and had like a good positive feedback, which is great. But um, I was quite nervous for it coming out because you know we you know we had spoke back, a bit back and forth about the creative process, yeah, and overthinking yeah. things, and should yeah. I release it now and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, but it was good to get it out, and I'm glad that uh, people enjoyed it and that. But um, I've already kind of like started thinking what would be the next thing, right? And um, I came across. Uh, some stats on dating apps now dating app like dating app culture is obviously just now part of kind of like mainstream culture i guess so many people especially in our generation use it to meet up with people and yeah you know (laughs) meet up for people for quick flings and all that kind of stuff like but i was having a look at like stats on it and i didn't realize it's like an 11 billion pound industry in like the uk alone um like 
the stats of like people having depression from like using these types of apps and stuff like that it's like quite scary from not getting swipes yeah exactly yeah and like people are it's weird how i was speaking to a mate about this it's like it's weird how like they kind of manipulate that in terms of they'll give you like 10 swipes but then you have to pay for more and that's how like they make it's the the dopamine effect isn't it because yeah. people start like seeing like attractive women or uh, women see attractive men or whatever um and get like the dopamine effect of doing that oh maybe that person will speak to me but then mm. it stops and you're like oh okay i will pay 10 15 20 pound a month I've, yeah i've never used a dating app neither have i in, never in never my life like i was thinking to myself like why why wouldn't i not use one is it because i wouldn't want pictures of myself up on the net or something but then i was like well no that's crazy because i've got like hours upon hours of video content of my myself speaking about loads of random shit and i think it's just it's not real is it there's like a social firewall there compared nah, it's, to like nah, it's it i've never ever done it right but i've got mates that are on these mm. things and they're like oh because i i'm single right so yeah, yeah they're like oh why don't you put uh why don't you create one of these accounts and other and i'm like nah because i got if i'm going to meet someone I, I it would be like face to face eh? like exactly yeah i don't get the whole like you know speaking behind you know the internet all the time and, and creating like you're you're speaking to people that are thousands of miles away yeah, you don't exactly, even know who yeah. they are and the for, like behind it could be a man yeah exactly yeah right I mean, there's so much of the catfishing stuff going on yeah like, i don't it. know if anyone's seen the reality tv show but that's fucking... i've got like an episode or two some of the stuff that happens there's wild but uh, like you know likewise i've got like mates that are on it and i'll see them like sit there and swipe and it'll be like yes no like so quickly and i'm like it kind of is you're judging people it, yeah, as well, it's though. Yeah, mad, man. At like, the same time, like, do you know what I mean? Like, for example, you could swipe no to someone. You think, I'm just average, right? She's average looking. But, like, you can meet her in a bar. Get talking to her. You could get talking to her. You think, fucking hell, I'm attracted to her for two things. She's mm -hmm. a nice looking bird, right? But and then at the same time, she's, you know, she's nice to talk yeah, to. She's, she's a, a good person. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, like, and you could be like, yeah, that's enough for me. Mm -hmm. Right? But, like, you're just going, nah. Nah, yeah, 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 nah. yeah. And you're like, what are you looking for? A 10? Yeah, exactly. But that's. Be that realistic. Is, it's manipulating the mind. Yeah, Because, yeah, like, fucked. It's, it is influencing. It's not interested in you having, like, a relationship with someone mm. or getting married to someone. It's there for who can you have sex with first. Pretty much. That's basically what it's that's trying to do. That's pretty much, yeah. You know? That's pretty much, yeah. Especially, like, the likes of Tinder. And, I mean, the ones that I'm aware of, obviously, Tinder being, like, the main one, because like, there's been documentaries on it and all that type of stuff. But, like, I think there's like ones like Bumble and Hinge, and then I remember like back in the day, you remember the adverts from Match.com? That was like the original <laughs> one, and they would have like these big adverts about how people would get married and that through it. Just like complete. I'm sure there like has been rare occurrences where it's worked, but it's not like a, you know, it's not, it's not a positive percentage thing of people that are end up in successful relationships. I would say there was a bower that happened to me the other uh, the other day. I usually YouTube a lot, mm -hmm. like you know whether it's for DCS content, whether it's for you know, called or mm. just general things like like podcasts and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> this 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 them thing like advert thing popped up, and it was like, um, do you do you want to know how to turn girls on? <laughs> this that and the next thing, and she was like, oh, and then you had to like click on the video, and then she would like tell you how to speak to yeah, women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like. <laughs> why is this popping yeah. up on my like what is this like people pay for this yeah, shit. yeah. what the fuck but it's, it's mad that like it's like you're it's like she's giving you the key to talk to women yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. really do people fall for that and shit? like the way that like they they uh because if you look at like how adverts are kind of projecting on facebook they'll use age demographics so like it, it goes back to what we were saying the last time we we're on here about the mm. how much the phone listens to you and knows about you and stuff like <laughs> that so if you are single if you are a male that's between 25, 30 or whatever, that they will put that kind of stuff in front of you because they know that loads of people are going to be like, mm. oh, like this would help me or, or whatever. But I mean, it is, it's so mental, the amount of manipulation that is just there on the internet. Yeah. And I was thinking about, I might've mentioned this last time, but like, I'm sure you've seen the social dilemma on Netflix and stuff like that, um, but it talks about uh, what it puts in front of your face and that depending on what you've clicked on so like if you watch the video on facebook more like that or if you're angry at something it'll show you more of that to get you more angry and more emotional and like the way that they were going into it like i know people have said that oh this could influence elections and that and that always kind of like made me think like oh come on like being a bit over but it, like it's it's genuinely going to be like that do you know yeah. what i mean and it's like a it's a scary thing to kind of 
like think about that like that has so these companies have so much influence they're probably more powerful than like any kind of political campaign or any kind of but if you think about it, everybody's on the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I mean everybody. Everybody, yeah. like it. I mean, from all ages. Like, uh, there's kids out there that are like four or five years old that have iPads and iPhones and everything, right? So, like, I mean, I know you're not going to obviously convince a kid like that to vote for someone, but yeah, like, yeah. but that's just like you're accessing people that young to, yeah, yeah you know, yeah. people that may be in their eighties, right? So, yeah. like, I mean, I, I, yeah, you could definitely reach more people that way than the old way. Yeah. And so. it's just, it's, it's mad that, like, it's only going to get worse. I can't see it, like, changing. I feel like it's too far gone. Technology is a thing. Like, to, for example, like innovation is just, like, you know, the more the more we become technologically advanced as a civilization, the more, the quicker that technology will advance. Mm-hmm. Right? So, like, as before, like, say, like, back in, I don't know, the, when Robert the Bruce was kicking about, like, yeah. there wasn't a mad change in technology right and not until the 1700s when, when there was like cannons and all that sort of stuff and actual gunpowder and all that sort of stuff and then a change and all that and then like when you think about nikola tesla and all that that's when things started changing but and then nowadays it's just going to keep going even faster yeah 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 so it's just going to get worse yeah and because it's... we don't we haven't learned to play with our toys correctly. exactly yeah uh, so yeah, it's just gonna get fucking worse. And I think, like, so I mean, people always seem to think that like AI is, is gonna end up like Terminator, but like we're kind of looking at it how we would react to something like, oh, something's not uh, mm. working right, and the planet kill it. Do you know what I mean? That's what like it's our own kind of projection of our own fears of what we would do. Whereas someone explained it a bit more differently. It's still bad because it still leads to our like extinction, but. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone! By the way, <laughs> to keeping it cheery and that on the northeast corner. But um, uh, they were explaining it like it's going to come to a point where like AI and stuff like that's going to become so advanced that it's going. It's all. I would probably argue it's probably getting smarter than humans already, or it's already like becoming level with it and can act on its own anyway. But it's going to get to a point where it realizes how destructive we are for the planet and be like, right, okay, because it's like AI and, and computer programs and whatever it may be is all about efficiency, isn't it? Like, that's what they say the main difference will be is, like, it doesn't have the same emotion. So, like... No, there's no emotion. Exactly, yeah. So, like, just for example, uh, humans make decisions out of emotions that people that maybe would think more logically, like, why did they do that, right? But that's... You can't explain that, isn't it? It's your emotions. It's, it's being part of being human. Yeah, I mean, think about it this way, right? Say, like, you, you have artificial intelligence soldiers and because that's what happened that will happen yep. soon so if you think about artificial intelligence soldiers right and the target is say i don't know an isis leader or something yeah. now a person that's going to shoot them with a rifle a sniper rifle they have human emotion and think oh no i don't know if i should pull the someone's trigger life yet. yeah yeah they yeah, don't yeah. fucking they if it's artificial intelligence they ain't fucking pausing. No, it's just focused on the task at hand. Boom, been they're gone. Yeah, like, exactly, yeah. It's so, like, they don't have that need to think about things. They just do the task and that's it. They have a one order. That's it. And, I mean, it technology is basically an evolution of us in a way because we've created it. The, and, obviously, it will take over and, you know, then run the Some would argue that they are, they, like, they are the ones to take over from yeah. us as a civilization. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, obviously... Like, you know, I, I've been keeping a lot of attention with, like, you know, like, the protesters and stuff like that that have been doing really extreme things, like throwing tomato soup at paintings and all that kind yeah, of stuff, that, right? Yeah. And I was thinking about it, right? And I was of the mindset, and this is just to do with, like, the climate stuff and that yeah. uh, at the moment. Um, and, I, like, a lot of people are kind of been, like, why are they disrupting people's lives? And, um, like, people have been able, not been able to go to hospital and that because they've been blocking the road and stuff. And I've always been like, yeah, it's like, what the fuck are they doing and stuff? But I was listening to one of them speak. And they were talking about, um, well, if we weren't, and I'm not condoning what they've done in any way, but it did make me think a bit differently. But they said, if we didn't do these extreme things, no one would be talking about it. And when they said that, I was like, they're probably right. Like, if you look at the amount that, like, the government have cracked down on protest, especially to inconvenience them, like, that's what protest is meant to be. It's meant to be an inconvenience to get a message across. Yeah. Whereas, like, the policing bill and stuff like that Boris and all that had brought in was like, we're going to control the noise level. You can't block streets that government officials are going to, like, whatever. That 
you know, the, these people are right. Like the the reason that this stuff is getting talked about is because they're doing these things rightly or wrongly, right? Um, like I know they have that cop thing every year. It doesn't make a one bit of difference. It's a bunch of big leaders getting together, having a nice meal, pretending like they're going to do something about it. Hundred percent. You yeah. know, so it, it, it's, I think what worries me about it in general is because of the amount of support that obviously people are getting pissed off that they're doing these type of things. How many more laws are going to be against protest that then end up fucking people over just as a whole, right? Because as, if they make more laws to make protest more hard, how long until that affects yourself or something? You know what I mean? Like it's it's more, you know, when they when they do that, I think it's more it's the way they do it. But again, you know, that the, there is truth in what they're saying, but the way they're you know what it's the way they're doing it is stupid and some people do bandwagon on it some people will do it to like get just to cause trouble yeah right? they don't give a shit about the environment no, and reality no they don't go fuck they just want to create trouble and, yeah you know gives them something to do but at the same time i don't think it's the government you need to convince i think it's the elite yeah mm-hmm. all those really powerful people that really run the yeah, world yeah 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 it's them you need to convince and you ain't getting anywhere fucking near them so yeah exactly you're it's... fighting a losing battle right they're not gonna listen to you they don't care they know what they're doing is wrong but it's funding their bank accounts so they don't give yeah, a yeah. fuck like we would be so far advanced if they'd listened mm-hmm. years and years ago but it's too much money and oil and all that to change any technology in order to save the planet or you know to, to make it a better place because they, they they can't absolutely do that yeah and they choose not to. Like, when we think about leaving a couple months ago, right? So Boris finally got booted, ironically. We were talking for months. Like, <laughs> next week is going, next week is going. And then when we take a break is when he finally, finally like, like, gets, you know, kicks it. He nearly got back in as well. We'll, have to, like, we'll talk about that in a second. But um, so they had a leadership contest, right? There wasn't, we weren't allowed to vote or whatever. And people were kind of up in arms about that. And then I th- it was Liz Truss. Oh God! Like if we if we thought Boris was, I mean, it actually impresses me how they managed to get someone worse like each time. Like it's almost like admirable. But uh, Liz Truss was like on an internship as prime minister, really, because it took six weeks just to plunge everything down the fucking toilet. And someone made a good point of the reason that she went is because powerful people got affected, like the markets and things of that, and bankers and things of that nature. We're like, right, okay, we need to change. But there was like a massive call for like an election at that point because people were just tired of it. It was like, I think there needs to be a change, blah, 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 blah. And then it ended up being another contest and it was between Sunak, who's obviously now the Prime Minister, and uh, Boris again. Boris was trying to get back in, which he nearly got, I think you have to get like 100 votes or something. I, I'm not too yeah, know like, about the thing of it. But yeah, within Parliament or something. Yeah, you need like 100 backers and then it goes to like the membership vote. But like... And none of that time, considering there was like a public outcry for like an election at that point, because like there was so much stuff going on, they crashed the economy, everyone was worried about mortgages, there was talks about fucking blackouts, which when I heard that, I was like- I seen that, I was like, what the fuck, this, that's, it's not the 50s anymore. Exactly, it's like, we're like, what, the fifth richest country in the world. And they're talking about blackouts. And, and the fact that's even mentioned is a sackable offence for anyone that's involved in that whatsoever. And then- you know, like obviously Liz Trust went, which was like the right decision because it was just like a. What about people in life sport? Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Like it was just, it was madness. And then it all turned into like, how do we like save face here rather than, well, okay, loads of people aren't able to heat their homes, they aren't able to get food and all this kind of stuff. And then obviously like Sunax came and it's all died down. But the point remaining being like the markets and that were pissed off at what she did. So she was removed. But, like, the people that were pissed off at her didn't get their say, and it's just business as usual now, which, obviously, we've talked about tons about how, like, they're not interested in the general public, do you know what I mean? They're interested once every five years when it comes around, um, and then as soon as, like, they're in power, it's all about how we're keeping it. I don't think any person in Parliament, any person that is in the UK that has anything to do with politics have maybe not having to do with public politics as there probably is people in you know I think there is genuine people got, in there but they're, min- they're a minority aren't they yeah, they're not. but it's, but there's not many of them yeah. right but I don't think anybody that, that is in, a, in and around that world has got what it takes to run this country mm-hmm. and the people that you, you need to to run the country are the people that have been to hell and back the people that know the differences between eating and not eating and being freezing and being homeless yeah 
there, there needs to be like a group of some sort that that run the the country that have actually been through shit and know what the fuck's yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. These people are all these are people that are all in politics. They're all privileged people. Yeah, yeah. They've all you know what I mean. They're all they're 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 not short of anything, and uh, they haven't got a fucking clue what they're talking about. They're standing up in parliament. They don't know what they're talking about. They just see everything as numbers. They don't see people as people. We are like scum to them. Mm -hmm. They don't give a fuck whether we die, whether we live. Hence why they were talking about blackouts for fuck's yeah. sake. Like they don't care. The and fact that if anybody thinks that, then they're fucking mistaken. Yeah. And it's like, it's the same with like, I mean, it's like a cross party thing. Like we said, there is, there is going to be good and bad people in all walks of life. So there is probably genuine people in politics. But like we said, these Not people many. never get to positions never of power them. to influence there's, exactly. And there's a reason for that. Yeah. I mean, um, like the the Labour Party, for example. So what the Labour Party stands for is Party of the Labour, right? Mm. And like, there's all these strikes going on recently because mm. inflation's what nineteen percent, and they've been offered a three percent wage increase. That's just, it's unreasonable to like. So like, people rightly enough, like it is, it's a form of protest. It's to be inconvenienced. Obviously, people are pissed off because like, they might not get their train back for Christmas or whatever. But it's like, what are you meant to do in that situation? And then Sunak comes out and says, "We're going to make laws against striking." It's like, how? You how can't can you do that? Vote? Like, are you going to sack them? You know what I mean? Like, say, say like you have a, an office, right? And 3,000 people work for that place, that company, right? Hmm. They all just don't go to work. Who are you sacking? Their boss? Who are yeah. you sacking? You can't sack them all. No, you can't sack them all. Fuck them, right? Yeah, that's what I say. Fuck them. Fuck the government. Yeah, yeah. Fuck them. The whole thing is, right? I've been on a wheelchair my whole life, right? So I've had my fair share of them being pretty unfair. Yeah. Right? So... I know exactly what I know what I'm talking about when when I say that they're just a bunch of bastards. That's all they are. They they don't give a fuck about you, and uh, it just it's actually scary to see how it's getting worse. Yeah, yeah, not better. And they're more comfortable with it being known that that's they don't care. Yeah, yeah, they, exactly, they, yeah. they will literally happily come out and say things because they're all stupid. Yeah, yeah, they're like they're supposed to be sm the smart ones. Yeah, yeah, that are running the country. It's a laughable country now. It's laughable. And it's like even with things like. The House of Lords, that's not even a democratically elected system to have influence. That you can buy your way in there. Yeah. Which is just so fucked up. It's that like, you know, like in Star Wars, how, like, I'm going off topic here, but uh, like, I was, in Star Wars, like, there were people mourning about because the Jedi were only fighting for the rich. Yeah. It's the same kind of thing, right? It's only the rich that they protect. Mm -hmm. It's not like if you're. If if you're struggling to feed your kid or your house has got mold in it and the kids are getting sick, like they'll just leave you to rot in there. Yeah, like because you don't have money, you don't mean shit to them. That's it what it is. It was like when um <laughs> Hancock, who we talked about in depth last time, about is it's mad that he's came out with a new book where he's now he's he's leaving as an MP because he wants to go explore show business he's done apparently he's done <laughs> SES Who Dares Wins right apparently he's done that show not sure if it's been released yet but obviously he's done the celebrity program and that as well that was fucking hilarious and we were talking about how like people have kind of turned not turned on him but like turned their opinion of like oh he's not such a bad guy that was mad exactly but he's in in his new book he kind of hints that the reason because what people have a problem with him for is he kind of put in um they would rush through this decision of like people that uh, elderly people that were going back to care homes that had COVID, um, not to test them before going back, and then COVID got into the care homes. Obviously, uh, age is like a big factor to deal with COVID, as they now know. So, like a lot of people died needlessly through that because they weren't doing the proper check before people went back into elderly communities and that. Yeah, and he he's kind of tried to twist that round and blame care workers for that. Which is like, at the time, like we've said, like no one knew what the fuck was going on. They're the guys that have got all the science and the, the experts and data. Like It's their responsibility to know that, to make the decisions that respond to it. Mm -hmm. And like he's he's a dude that deflects blame. You know what I mean? Like We, we said this before, Like I wouldn't trust anything that comes out of that dude's mouth. You know what I mean? Like I, He's a very, very good actor. Yeah. I mean, pff, there's a fucking spot on Corey for him. Like... He's a very good actor. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, I seen it on the jungle. I, I I watched every episode of the jungle, and I was kind of interested to see, you know, what he, what he would be like. And he mucked in, and he did his he did his piece. Don't get don't get me wrong; like he did pretty well in there for like you know every challenge that he, yeah, did, yeah. He did, like he did it really well. And uh, but it was like 
he was acting the whole time. Yeah, he wants to be like That's not him. That's not really him. No. Like, I think, you know, if you, if you'd put some, like, cameras in his room or something or mm. heard some phone calls or whatever. It's just, he's summoning a spell in just, a cauldron or something. <laughs> <laughs> he's just he's just a fucking, he's not, he's just an actor. Yeah. yeah. Mm. He's an absolute, he's probably an absolute cunt. Mm. To be fair, I mean, he looks yeah. like one to me, but, you know, I'm, I, I'm not judging. Yeah, but like... I am, really. Yeah, of course. Of course, we're a judgmental podcast. But of course. Anyway, but, I mean, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, thank, thank God the COVID stuff's over. That's one thing that's been great this year, that we finally... You remember last year we were talking about this and we are like, is this ever going to end? Like, is there ever going to be like a... Because I don't think anyone had a problem with trying to protect people. It was just like, why are we using the same thing over and over again? in this kind of like Groundhog Day kind of cycle of where we open up, we shut down again. Why is there not things in place to stop it from going back to that? Yeah. And obviously through pharmaceutical intervention and stuff like that, that seems to have worked and, and other things to the point of where normal life has pretty much resumed in this side of the world. Obviously like, you know, we've seen protests and stuff like China and that because they're pretty still draconian lockdown and stuff like that in the moment. I've but, seen uh, that, yeah. There's people dying all over the place over there. I wonder what that is. Yeah, I mean it's a different different world over there, isn't it? Like they they're kind yeah. of run by like what a social credit system where like they know everything about you, and if you do anything that they don't like, you kind of go down in society, which is just so I just kind of I just kind of hope that doesn't yeah is the case here. Well, that that's you know? the thing. Like there's like Rogan episodes where like we've spoken about this guy a few times, but uh, Mike Baker, the CIA agent or the yeah, ex CIA yeah, agent, yeah, yeah. like fake CIA agent. Uh, no, ex CIA agent. I thought you said fake. No, CIA no, no, no. no. <laughs> I think like, he just went on there. Like, I'm CIA agent. It's actually a lied. Uh, <laughs> um, I've seen a few of his podcasts. He's quite a cool guy. Isn't yeah, he? I always, I always just tune in when he's on because I, I, I want to know what's going on because he's always like talking about like world affairs, like what are Russia doing, what like the big powers. I'm, I'm a bit of a, a, a history modern studies nerd in that way, but he's, he's always talking about that. Like his fear is that because China's economy is just so good. You know what I mean? They've built it up to like produce every, like everything that you get most of the time you will see from China. made in China. Yeah, this fucking phone that I've got in my pocket is probably yeah, made in China. yeah, hundred percent. Like the lap, every everything probably here, and they've used that to the point of where they're like one of the biggest economies in the world, and they're right up there with America now. Which America obviously feel very threatened because America see themselves as we're like we should be we're the dominant. Yeah, else, we're yeah. the dominant power, and we can't we can't let anyone get close to that, right? And he was like, the fear that he, he has is that because they're so successful in their economy and the way that they've done it, because obviously it's it's under like a bit of a dictatorship, but it is under a dictatorship. There's not a bit of a dictatorship. It's like everyone, you know, do what we say or we'll, you know, kill you or something, kind of. It's kind of like Korea. Yeah, well, North Korea. North Korea. Yeah, yeah. They're a pretty bad that is, Do you know, like, apparently that if you fly over there overnight, the only city that's got power to it is Pyongyang, the capital. Serious? Yeah, because they can't afford to like power the entire country because of, like the nuclear weapons program and that. I don't know if that's like propaganda from Are you side. aren't you you're not allowed a mobile phone chair over there, you're not? I remember like when people have went there to do documentaries and that, they've been shown where to go. They're not allowed to like freely just go around and film and stuff like that. Like there'll be people watching them, like if they go down like somewhere they shouldn't know. Because I, I heard like I was on YouTube one day and there was one guy and he said a fan asked him a question, like if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you want to go? And he was like, well, if I could guarantee my safety, I'd love to go to North Korea just to mm. see what it was like. Mm -hmm. And I was like, fuck, is it that bad? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know it was that bad. Do you remember when, <laughs> I remember when we were younger, right? And it was like the prime Justin Bieber era. And he put a poll out on, I think, Twitter or social media platform or something where he should tour next. And because like so many like uh, young men and that hated him at the time and stuff, they voted for him to go to North Korea. And it, apparently it was like almost like a legal bind thing where he nearly had to go do it, which was like, it was crazy. Do you know what I mean? Like this was like prime uh, America, North Korea tensions, like the, the film, the interview just came imagine? out. Yeah, brutal one. North Korea. I mean, it, it, I'd, be, I'd be really interested in like to see what it is like as an everyday person that lives there. Yeah. What can you do? What can't you do? Mm -hmm. Fuck. Yeah, man. What a place, eh? Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just like, it's, it's weird because that was like, obviously, as a country, it's divided, right? Like, the South yeah. is very much allies with the West, I guess you would call it. And North Korea is obviously more kind of, um, you know, it was that whole proxy communism, capitalism kind of wars that happened through the 50s, 60s, 70s, yeah. and what have you. 
that it's it's ended up like that. See, like China, like are you not like only allowed two kids or something? I think they've extended it to three now, but I it was it was two for like. I'm telling you one thing, right? That that may sound a bit mad, but that's fucking pretty clever population yeah, yeah. control. I mean, that. like they've still they've still got like the biggest population in the world. Yeah. I think that it's like one point four billion or something. It's huge, yeah, world. it's brilliant. It's, it's massive, like, mental. Like it's what seven billion people on the planet, so that's like a seventh. That's crazy. Of the planet is just it, in that country. That's crazy, and it's like well. When you think about, because people have been saying recently, there's like a population crisis in terms of like there's not enough people like, and it's like what are you talking about? Like the population in 1918 was like 1.9 billion or something. Now it's like it's trebled almost. You know what I mean? Like it's like I don't see where they're coming from with that. It seems like a bit of a a weird one, but um, we'll move on to more positive things because a lot of bad things have happened this year. With you know, we've talked about like the Ukraine war and all that kind of stuff. Rangers beat Aberdeen last night. Well, I, you know what? I watched that game because uh, I was going to bring up the World Cup, but we'll, we'll leave that for a second because club football has obviously restarted pretty much straight away. From I didn't the, even watch it. That's well, I, I seen that. Uh, I was watching it on Sky, right? And the reason that I watch Rangers Aberdeen games is because I always, as a neutral, I watch the old firms. They're good games, and I watch the games against Aberdeen because, especially Rangers against Aberdeen, sometimes that's more intense. Than the old firm, especially like if you're in like a pub to go watch that game, it can be like, yeah, it can be. I mean, it's kind of like the next best thing to an old hmm. firm, kind of. It's quite, it's fucking intense. It can't I think be. someone was telling me it was to do with like the rivalry in the eighties as well, because obviously Celtic weren't as like hmm. um, up there. It was obviously Alex Ferguson was in charge of Aberdeen, so like he got Aberdeen challenging for the title and that, and you know, obviously Rangers went on that nine in a row kind of spree. Oh man, it was mad! Like the, there was bleed everywhere. It was legs broken yeah <laughs> it was a mad fucking it was a mad time and it's good that the intensity is still there though because Aberdeen like not to offend anyone because I know there might be Aberdeen fans watching but like Aberdeen they're kind of up against two giants even at that time when they won the leagues and stuff like that they're up against two giants that they should Ooh. probably have no right competing against right we have more money than them yeah yeah, yeah. more influence bigger so, well I don't want to say bigger fan base because then that's maybe when we can trigger a few bigger people. fan base <laughs> 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 but now like uh I mean, we had to work for it last night. Well, what was it? it was Scott Arfield scored two in two minutes or something like that. <laughs> crazy, man. It's crazy because it's normally Celtic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I am not... Uh, I'm going to sit here and say that, yes, I am offending you. Yeah. It's, it's Celtic that, you know, normally get the last minute goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, not, al- it's always like... We kind of... Yeah, that, yeah, I couldn't believe that when I walked on my phone yeah. last night. It was like... Holy shit! Because like I mean, I mean, it was a competitive. It's always it's a competitive game. It's one. It's these games that it doesn't matter who. Like it's the same with the old firm. Right? It doesn't matter what position, who's where, or whatever. It's obviously just centers around the game that day. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I remember. I mean, because for obviously when Rangers weren't in the SPL, it was kind of like, is there anyone going to be able to challenge Celtic whatsoever? And Aberdeen threatened to do it like once or twice, and then kind of fell off pretty quickly. And then there was like, they had Derek McInnes and he seemed like a good manager. And then they were talking about a new stadium. Obviously, COVID happened. So I think that's been pushed back and whatever. But like, I, I remember the days of when like Aberdeen were in like the Europa League and were playing Bayern Munich. Do you know what I mean? And they but obviously they won like a Ferguson won them a cup, Winners' Cup or something against Real Madrid or something like that as well. But I mean, that's when, you know, like Scottish football, like, so like, uh, I think we might have mentioned it here before, but like, whether you were. You know, playing in down in England, so like mm. say you're like Man City, Manchester, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah. like that. So it didn't matter. Like in England and Scotland, there wasn't much of a difference in how much the players cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like back then, you know, like Aberdeen kudo challenge for it because they, uh, well, obviously they weren't as rich as Rangers, but they still had money mm-hmm. that could com- you know have players competing. Do you know what I mean? Nowadays, it just went fucking way yeah, too far. Yeah. Like money, football, money, like you can imagine how much players get paid. Messi gets paid. I love Messi, by the way. I thought I was so happy for him. The best World Cup final in our lifetime? 100%. 100%, right? That was one of the best games of football I've ever seen. Because I thought the tournament was quite underwhelming up until that point. Up until that point. And then I put the the game on and I I wanted Argentina to win for the same reasons as you because um, 
It just it felt like it was destiny for Messi. Yeah, like I remember 2014 when I had Argentina on. Uh, not that I'm bitter about this. I had Argentina on at 30 to one to win the World Cup in 2014, and Germany beat them in extra time, and I never got over it. Right? It was the same with Croatia. They were 40 to one, and France beat them in the final. It's just I can never get that that step. What was your odds on that? The 30 to one uh, for Croatia or for Argentina? No, sorry, your odds were 30 to one, but how much? Uh, oh, well, I put like 10 or 15, that was so long ago, like 10 or 15 <laughs> quid, so it would have been it would have a fair sum. That would have been decent. I won big this tournament though, Japan, beating Germany. I had the live odds, as we talked about last time, £450, which oh, f- is respectable. I mean, I see people like Crookie and that, and they put me to shame. Like, I was like, oh, I've just won £980, and I'm like, but I also realise that they're frequent bears, but I try and like... I don't think Crookie's won much this year, I don't know. No. I had to ask him. My yeah. brother won twelve hundred pound the other day. Though. Jesus man! Like he had a, I can't remember what fucking game it was on. I can't remember what it was, but fucking hell, what a bet it was! Like it was like, do you know that? Um, do you know if you're looking for tip like that footy accumulator on Twitter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Follow them because that was one of the bets that he followed. And they're they're mad how like they well they can predict stuff as well, and it must be based around stats and like people that are I, football I've, experts. I've thrown a couple of bets on from them since, and I haven't got nothing, but. It's you know what I mean you can't get everything, but at the same time, my brother just got twelve hundred from them. So yeah, and that's the danger about betting, right? Because it's so good when you win <laughs> that you're like, see when you got that coupon on, you're yeah. Like, there's like there's like an episode of South Park where um you know when they go to the casino and they bet and they save the town and instead of like actually saving, then they bet again <laughs> and, and they lose it all. But that is what betting makes you do. A hundred percent because it's like a it's like a little dopamine rush in it. Yeah, yeah. When you stick that bet on and nothing better than sitting down. Sticking a bet on, sitting down watching Jeff on a Saturday, oh, watching all the scores. Gillette soccer, ah, uh, just phenomenal. Like, I'm so glad that he's staying on for the rest of the season, but I don't know if I can live without Jeff Stalin on soccer Saturday. No, I think he's, I think he's staying now. Oh, I think he's staying now. Because I was already fuming when they got rid of Charlie Nicholas, mm-hmm. Phil Tom. Because the, that's why the he originals. Was I think that's why he was leaving to start Cause, with. Because when it was like he thought, "Fuck this, I'm tired." Yeah, because. I mean, obviously Chris Kamara's had a bit of um, health issues recently, mm. so obviously he's had to take a back. Uh, see, Chris Kamara's one of my favourite people of all time. He still does that. Um, yeah, it's the game show, isn't it? Yeah, he still does that. Yeah. yeah. I've seen him on Who Wants That. I've seen him on Millionaire. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Right. He was on there. But he's just like such a charismatic guy. I don't know if you've ever seen a story about Roy Keane in the elevator. I'll have <laughs> to link it to you later. Oh, it's so funny. Um, but uh, uh, Jeff Stone's staying. That's just good. I hope. Um, I'm pretty sure I've seen that. And he's staying now. Uh, but like it was when they were replacing people with like Mark Wright from the Only Way is Essex, and I'm like, what? Like he was on Gillette Soccer Saturday, and I'm like, has this dude played football professional? I don't even know. But like, you know, no disrespect to him because like if I got offered that job, I he's would. He's a good it. footballer. Yeah, I no, I, I've seen the um, soccer aid and but stuff I don't, like I that. I don't think uh, he might be a football fan, you know, but he's kind of like out of place mm. there, isn't he? Yeah, and it was just like, why, why change it? it was, it's not broken. It's one of the best. Performing programs oh, in the sky. So good. Like, why would you fuck something up? Like, why would you? It works. Yeah, and leave it's like, it. It's like they're. That's what FIFA are doing now as well. They're changing the World Cup to every three years, and it's like, come on, man. Do you remember when? Um, was it Tim and Helen were on? Uh, oh, soccer. Yeah. Soccer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. That was yeah. Fucking. That yeah, was great, yeah. wasn't it? I like, uh, is it Tubes? He does like segments on Soccer AM. Yeah. He's like all about golf and stuff like that as well now. Yeah, I like Tubes. He had a heart attack, didn't he? But he's looking great now. Yeah, yeah. Because I think he was an alcoholic for a while. I'm pretty sure I've seen him on a podcast Tubes. talking about it. I love yeah, his segments know. though, man. Like, I, I find it's it. Funny as fuck. Yeah. But yeah, Soccer AM used to be the program to go uh-huh. every Sunday before like Super Sunday and that. Yeah, it's um, fucking brilliant. Yeah, so the World Cup final, it was. Yeah, I mean. We were <laughs> we kind of jinxed it, right? Because we were talking about how Messi's going to win the World Cup. It was 2-0. And to be fair, we didn't expect France to go score two in like 57 seconds or whatever it was. And as much as shit as we've spoken about Mbappe, can't deny the dude's a fucking good football player. And that second goal was just unreal. Mbappe's like, he's so fucking good. Yeah. He's so good. But he's a dick, but he's so good. He's just arrogant, right? See, if you could sort that out, man, like he would be... Phenomenal. Like, it would be a phenomenal guy. The fucking hell, that guy can play football, man. Yeah. He's I mean, really, really good. That second goal, I was just like... I, I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, the ball's on this boy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, perfect. And he's only, what, 24 today? <laughs> yeah. Like, he's, he's he has scored 12 World Cup goals in two tournaments. 
So he's going to become the greatest World Cup goal, uh, providing he doesn't get like a massive injury or something like that. Mm. You know, touch wood, because like I'm not don't want him. Like, no, I don't want. You know, we don't we don't like him as an. It's, he's a we know, good villain. We know, you know? He, we know he's a knob, but we don't want that. Talent. Yeah. So like, uh, if all goes well, he's probably going to smoke that record because he's probably got two, three tournaments left. Oh yeah. But like, obviously, this was Messi's last World Cup. You would. It has to be as well because he's what mid thirties now. So like, it's like thirty three now. Thirty three. So he'd like be thirty eight. I mean. He's won everything in the game now. You know what? He's he? like got that sort of ability that he's 38 and he could be back. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He just don't like. I mean, that's the thing. Like, he's. I'd love to see him on another World Cup, but I think that would be fitting to just. I think just to end it, like yeah. the last game for the country. I mean, I know he says he wants to play as world champion, so get a few friendlies out there, but I think. Right. End right. it on a high note, man. 100%. Like. See when that. See when that. He's, when he was lifting that cup, man. I was just like. I was like so happy for him, man. I was absolutely yeah, buzzing yeah. because. I bet, like, I was, I'm 28, right? So I've been around to watch Ronaldinho and all that, like, when he was playing. On another planet, that guy was, man. And, you know, he was like, he was like the apprentice. Yeah, Messi yeah, He was yeah. the apprentice. Barcelona was the team, was At it? Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, he had obviously an Asta and all that, guys. But, like, I was sitting, like, I used to just watch him. I used to think, this kid's fucking phenomenal. Like, he's going to be amazing. I remember United played them in the Champions League final in 2011 I think it was hmm. and it was 1-1 right so I think Pedro had scored and Wayne Rooney had equalised or something and Messi made it 2-1 right and uh, he did like this dribble and he I think he I don't know if he tried the pass to uh, David Villa I think it was at the time I do you know what I might be being a bit biased here I think he meant to do this he played a 1-2 off of Nani the United winger and hit oh, yeah. the first time and made it 2-1 that is that is hands down the best football team that I've ever seen play because even though you, I would say United weren't the like prime 99 or even 08, 09 Ronaldo, mm. Burbot of Tevez kind of team, it was still a good fucking side and it still had one of the greatest kind of coaches of our time managing it and they just absolutely tore that team to shreds. Like it wasn't even a competition by the end of it. <laughs> as much as it, uh, it pains me to say it, yeah. but it was like, and like you would see those were like, that Pep Guardiola Barcelona, so I, I'm yet to see in my like live. I've seen like old teams and the old Milan's and that, and I can appreciate that. But the team that I've seen live, I've not seen better than that. Just in terms of what they've like done, like I remember they absolutely rinsed Mourinho and Madrid five 0 one time, and you know that was one thing that was overhanging Messi, right? Because he's obviously got the rivalry with Ronaldo for the goat, but. Even in Argentina, they were saying, well, he's not Maradona because he's never won the World Cup, even though he's won countless upon countless of trophies. And it was always the international stuff and he's done it. And Maradona did say, he's my successor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did say that. And um, yeah, I was just so fucking stoked for him. Like, I mean... And he showed up as well. Oh, I mean, he fucking he, did. Like, that tournament, like, I was thinking to myself when they got beat by Saudi Arabia, because I know Argentina hadn't been beaten in 40 games or something ridiculous before they got beat by Saudi and I was like, I just, I just can't see that. I think they've got a lot of good young players, and they've got Messi. I just don't think they're ready yet. I had, mm. I had Brazil. So cheers, Croatia, for ruining my bet quite early this year. But I um, actually never put a bet on to say he was going to win it, mm. but I did say Argentina was going to win it. Mm. Um, and then I saw Spain; they had a good run, and then I thought, hmm, they're looking pretty well. And then Morocco happened. What a good. story then, for Morocco, though. Eh? Yeah, and there was part of me that wanted Morocco to win it because. I think it would have been f incredible to see like an, an African nation win it for the first time and obviously they've got such an underdog story but also good players but once that had been settled when it came down to Argentina and France I wanted Argentina to win it. I've always had a soft spot for Argentina. Like, yeah, same. Simon Jordan said something like uh, weren't we at war with these people like 30 years? I was like oh come on mate like who who has Britain not been at war with at one point in time? You could say that by Germany. Yeah exactly you know what I mean it was just so ridiculous that someone would even come out and say something like that but We've um, had so many enemies being the United Kingdom. Exactly. Like, like how many things have we stolen from people? Yeah, how many countries have we stolen exactly, from people? Exactly like, like come on. had a war with France it might be longer ago but it happened and yeah, it's like Yeah but like the thing is like I, I'm more of a guy I would say I'm more of a Messi fan than I am a, an Argentino fan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I obviously wanted to, them to win for him. Um, because ever since, as I said, I'm an, I was a big Ronaldinho fan. So when I saw that Messi was like the next best thing, I was a fan instantly. Yeah, and I've yeah, just yeah. followed him ever since. And he's just like, he's had such a great career. And obviously the World Cup was the one thing that was alluding. He's won the Champions League. He's won 
counting the trophies at Barcelona. He's won the Copa America, Argentina. And the tournament he had was unreal. That was rolling the clock. But because I remember Messi in 2010, that was like what I would call his peak. I mean, he's been great for like a decade, but like the year of where you just could not stop that dude was 2010, but he would score the four goals in a game against Arsenal and all like, that. The Messi that was like constantly running. Oh yeah. Like the way he would just like double pass people and the the way he would just run through five, six yeah. people. Like easily. Like, yeah. Like he's not even trying. Like the ball stuck to his feet. That sort of guy. But then Messi's like now he's got like a different game where he's like more chill. He just like walks about the pitch mm-hmm. and then he creates all this space. Because he's always relied on technical ability, right? Yeah. Like, the difference between him and Ronaldo is Ronaldo's a physical specimen he's such a great athlete like what tall strong quick was you know two-footed and stuff like that but like Messi's fully technical ability right like yeah. he's quite small isn't he? you know you wouldn't you wouldn't say he was like Mbappe level pace to get him behind or anything but he was just so good with the ball that like I, yeah like but like you know like the fact that he could just like walk about the the, the pitch and he creates all this space like out of nowhere and then he sees passes that nobody else yeah, sees. Yeah. And he makes the... Like, he knows where every single player in his team are. He knows where every single player is. Like, so, like, does he even need to look when he's I mean, that, the ball? That, I said on Facebook the other day, that counter for the second goal for Argentina, that was a thing of beauty. That's as, like, lethal as a counter-attack as you'll get in football. Yeah. And it was good. I was... I mean... So he scored a penalty because, like, I think he had missed a couple of penalties in the group stage or something along the lines of that. Yeah, well. Messi has got a better free kick record than yeah than a penalty penalty record. record yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously like, you're not going to not have him on them, though, are you? you know no, I mean, when you have that level of player, no, I mean, you're obviously gonna, obviously going to have him on the pans, but yeah, he's much better at free kicks than he has uh, been at penalties. Then went to extra time, Messi scores, and I'm thinking that's it, that's the story written, like, and then. Uh, I think it was another France penalty, wasn't it? And then Mbappe sent it the the same way. And it was so stupid, though, the way like the the guy just like had his hands up in the air. Yeah, yeah. It was and like, I was like, "What the fuck are you doing? Why would you do that?" It was like what three minutes to go or something? Obviously, no. Like, like when you're jumping up in there, you're not thinking. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, your hand flops up, and then it's emotions like, are getting the better. You're probably thinking, "I'm about to win the World Cup here," <laughs> all that kind of stuff. Your bro. hand just flops though without you even thinking. Like, is where did gravity go? Yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck is going on? But yeah. Uh, well, it worked out in the end, and I'm happy. But like the way he was like walking up for his, uh, for his, I think it was for best player. Oh, golden the, ball! I think it is the best player of the tournament. Something like that. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. he was walking up, and then walked past the the World Cup, and he and looked at that. it, and yeah, he kissed yeah, it, yeah, and I was yeah, like, yeah. "Fucking great! I love yeah. it. Yeah, just love it." And his penalty for the penalty shooting was like ice. You know what I mean? Like just straight down the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And phenomenal. he just kind of like. I remember, like, he just kind of chilled and, like, went like that to the fans. And, yeah, undisputed goal of football now. There's no there's ah, no yeah, question there's no about dispute. it. I never even thought there was. Yeah, but in the mainstream. Yeah, view, I mean, like obviously, uh, people think of Ronaldo because his work ethic, like, mm-hmm. how what he did to get to where he is. They've is, definitely pushed each other, haven't they? For sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I mean, like, I can, like, say Portugal, just say Portugal played before Argentina, right? Ronaldo scores two. Messi got it, mm-hmm. score three. It was the same when they were at Real Madrid, Barcelona. Yeah, and years. it was constant, and I like that. I think, you know, he, I mean, I think they both said, I think it was Ronaldo, he said, you know, when we both retire, we'll go out for dinner because they've yeah, never yeah. done it. Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, I think they'll be best mates when they both retire. Yeah, and that's the thing, like, without each other, I don't think they would... They would have peaked yeah. the level. The I don't think they would have been as good as what they were because yeah. they're in that competition. It's a healthy rivalry is what yeah. they would call it. I would say so. Yeah, but yeah. no, very good final. Um... I'm looking forward to the club football coming back. I'm not looking forward to all the injuries that are going to be as a result of this World Cup. But just the last thing on the World Cup, do you see the response? Like, the South Americans know how to celebrate, man. Like, did you see the shots like Buenos Aires? And I'm talking, like, that is something that we could only aspire to be, like, that level of passion and celebration for something. Oh, you know? it's just crazy. Like, I've seen them, a video, Argentinians, and they were just, like, there was, like, 10 out of 10 chicks yeah. naked just walking the street. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? And there's like, you know, like I was like, I could only imagine the parties that was going on yeah. over there. Like, and obviously that will probably continue for a long time coming still fresh off the bat. But uh, so it's uh, it's Christmas time. Um, still got a beer to finish. Still got about, still good on time. Nine year stream starts. We've got an hour, hour and a bit left. So we'll go for another 20 minutes or something. I'm trying to nurse this flat 
<laughs> Shit. <laughs> but uh not much left. It's 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 crazy how this time of year like sneaks up on you. Like I always know that like I kind of hate the start of November because that's when like the adverts are out and it's just, it's so dragged out. But obviously because I've been focusing on stuff like getting the documentary and that, I've kind of not been aware <laughs> of it as much this right. year. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking, for, I'm definitely looking forward to Christmas this year because I know that I w- it won't be ruined like last year where it was literally cancelled if I couldn't leave the house for 14 days. So I'm looking forward to that, getting to see family and that for the first time in a few years. Obviously we've, um, 2020 obviously it was a bit sketchy as well in terms of like going into people's houses and shit like that so much planned yeah. for the holidays or I think we're just having it in mind Christmas this year having it mm. in mind and uh, I think my granny and that's coming over but uh, then I would imagine like my cousin and I'll probably come over at night for a crack but that's it yeah yeah and, and that, then, that's the thing like as we grow older like I remember like obviously as a kid it's about material things but how many presents am I getting this stuff for me like I probably sound like an old man here but like I just wake up and I'm like, I'm buzzing for food and I'm buzzing for like a chat with like everyone. I'm, not I'm the see same, all yeah, there, I'm know? exactly the same. Like, give me a Christmas dinner and a chocolate gato and <laughs> I don't know, like a f- film on the telly. Like, I don't can't be arsed with anything else. But like, obviously people come over and stuff and it's cool to, to chill out in it. Yeah, I mean... I'm not really mad about like getting absolutely steaming anymore. No, like, I mean, I like a few chill beers but i feel like on top of the food as well obviously it can be like the like, ship is docked port kind of thing if you go <laughs> yeah. too far with it you know like before like i used to go to the coolie and i used to get absolutely rubbered but yeah i, I kind of can't be bothered with that anymore yeah i always feel like especially pubs on christmas the bar is completely packed it's so hard to get a drink and yeah uh, i've kinda, done it a few yeah, times nice. myself like but I, I, I definitely prefer much more space I used it's to- just I used to go there all the time, all the time. Every every Christmas I went. Yeah, there. I'm I'm I haven't been there for like at least a year and a half. One of the one of the reasons is because I'm always interested in case the person that we've uh, mentioned, which I always say, has, has watched certain criticisms, and I don't want to be publicly barred. Well, I give him. I used to give him them criticisms to his face. Mm-hmm. So I don't think he would bother me. To be fair, yeah, that's other because uh, yeah. Yeah, we've 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 uh, we've uh, described our expressed our criticisms of what's happened to that. Uh, it used to be a fucking great place. It was the place. best place. It was the greatest. It place. was like the, the are the same people who've been there all the time. Like obviously, we'd get a bit rowdy at the weekends because obviously there's like more people that were moving up for like, the military and stuff and, and stuff like that. But there was never anything mental happening. Nah, anything, like like you know? for, like when I used to go in there on a Friday and a Saturday on a Saturday night, whatever. Like there was never any trouble. Yeah, never. Because, like, even, like, you know, like, a lot of people would, like, say, like, the locals and the RAF guys, like, there used to be, like, a scrap of the beach or whatever. But, like, see, like, in the clo- like in the coolie, like, nobody bothered each yeah. other. Like, I had loads of people that I had met from the RAF camp and that I got on with. And I used to get sit and drink with them every weekend. And it was never an issue. And it was, like... They always used to have a laugh. And there that. was maybe, like, once in a blue moon, like, two people from the same squadron would get drunk and maybe have a Barney outside. But it wasn't, like... It was very rare. It was very rare, yeah. But, like... You know, like say I'd go out like with my auntie and that. Like I might sound like funny go out with your auntie, but like all my mates, like we would all go. Like I'd meet all my mates over there and my auntie and all mm-hmm. that was all there. So like it's a very everybody fun, was a very together. Fun orientated place, right? Yeah, like everybody was together. My grandfather was there. He, <laughs> he had his spot in the bar that I would keep warm for him until he got there. And then Aye, he would, be, he like, would uh, sit with John Suter and yeah, yeah, like the locals and that. Yeah, and yeah. he would be look at me and I would be there on his seat and he'd be like. Fucking man. <laughs> I went, all right. My <laughs> my mum used to work there, right? And um so my mum my auntie still works there, I believe. Pretty sure she does. And uh, yeah, my mum did exactly. work there, right? Mm. And my mum was telling me a story about your granddad the other day. Uh because I, I think I think it might be when the last old firm was on, so it wasn't the other day, but it was like recent. And she was saying, Oh god, I remember when like we used to have the old firms on in the pub and like my mum's quite like quite small right and so she was like left herself to deal with like like old firms always busy do you know what i mean if you're showing it yeah um, and obviously it can be quite contentious especially with two sets of fans or in the pub and i remember she was saying so this was like 90s so this is like when you know Celtic, i guess i just hired like martin o'neill or something and they were kind of trying to catch up with rangers who had just won the nine in a row and whatever and um <laughs> 
uh, she said that like a fight kicked off when she was like, having a fag, right? And your granddad took the keys and locked her out, saying, You're too small to get in here. Like, there was like a big bar. Like, my mum was like worried because she's like, I work here. Like, I can't let like people just be like kicking about in the pub. And then apparently it all got <laughs> sorted and then everything was fine. But yeah, I'm, <laughs> like, my granddad just wanted a free fucking Guinness. That's yeah. probably, that's probably what his <laughs> Make it sound was. like you're fighting. <laughs> aye, aye. Remember, it's still game when they'll get bucked. Aye, when Bobby's, outside. Bobby's outside. <laughs> Jesus, man. Aye. Yeah. Mate. Seeing they were in Inverness the other day. Uh, aye, in the Kieran co op or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen that, yeah. They were in Elgin as well a couple months ago. Gordon McPhail or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gordon McPhail and Ford. I wish Kieran. I went up because uh, I have, well, been a fan of still game for a long, long time. Oh, it's I mean, brilliant, man. I remember it was literally, I think it was just before the pandemic started uh the guy that plays bobby and uh the guy that plays david were going to do a q a a hotel in inverness of all places and me and a friend were uh, were about to book to go and then obviously like everything got shut down and that's what never ended up happening but yeah one of the best best sitcoms of all time the guy that plays david because i'm i'm a uh i i i only really follow one soap Mm-hmm. Right, and that's River City just because yeah, yeah, yeah. I've watched it for yeah, years yeah he's in that isn't he yeah, he's I've in seen that him, yeah, yeah. and it's funny because like he doesn't look nothing like Naveed mm-hmm. when you look at him right he's just got a totally different yeah because he's obviously got the beard and totally the, different yeah. person and uh, yeah he's a really good actor he's class but uh, I heard he was a Celtic fan so I kind of don't like him as much <laughs> as I used to I don't know if that's true but uh, <laughs> but yeah I've kind of been a bit wary of him ever since <laughs> but yeah nah like uh I'd, I'd like to meet them. It'd be cool because it's like I'm such a massive fan of it. You yeah. Know what I mean? So it would be, it's hard to like not see the characters in them. Though. Yeah. I mean, like, I remember because like it kind of had a bit of a anticlimactic ending the first time because they, I think there was like a falling out or something. I'm talking before they did like the recent series and whatever. Yeah, there was. They didn't talk for years. Yeah. Yeah. There was like. I don't know what the hell happened. I think was it the guy that played Winston and uh, the two guys that played Jack and Victor had a bit of a creative differences hmm. which is quite appropriate because they would always fall out on the show as well right but um, well I mean they were all tuna fat together and then yeah 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 I was watching my mate Jamie showed me this uh, 1999 stage performance of Still Game before it became hmm. a TV show because it was a sketch and tuna fat right and I it, yeah? that's right and I just I hadn't seen it before right and me and my mate watched like what five ten minutes of it yeah yeah fucking yeah. brilliant mm-hmm and they used the word fuck in it. Yeah, yeah, They didn't yeah. do in the show. Yeah, yeah, They didn't yeah. use that in the show, so it was funny watching them. That's mm-hmm. Jack and Victor say that, right? Well, honestly, it's on YouTube. I'll link you. It's funny. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's uh, 1999, and it's like a live performance. It's brilliant. Really funny. Different times, man. Different times. I mean, funnily enough, when we had Tom Morris in here, um, uh, like, Lee's like, Lee's like a big Celtic fan, right? And uh, he played football with Tom. So that's how he knew him, and obviously, like Tom's got his music on Spotify. He's part of one. I think they're up for best wedding band in Scotland. Actually, funnily enough, Macta Music that he's part of. All right. And uh, uh, he, he, what, he was like, "Oh, I'm buzzing to talk about football and that." And he was like, "I wonder what team like um, like Tom supports that again." So he asked him on here. You can see on the episodes, he's like Rangers, and you just see like Lee's face dropping that. And it was it was funny, but um, he was telling us that so Lee, Lee's a bit of a savage for making bets, right? So they would have like this fantasy, you know, fantasy football, you get the points and that. And the forfeit was you get kitted. So what happens when you get kitted is that if you lose, the other person will make you wear the kit of the team of what they support, right? So him him and one of his best mates, who's a Rangers fan, uh, I think Lee had beaten him one year and made him wear a Celtic top, right? So like obviously the biggest like humiliation for someone that's a Rangers fan and vice versa. And the next year uh, they did it again and Lee lost, and he did not go to football for five months to avoid. And we were talking; it was like you know when Stevie leaves the bookies after he was winston <laughs> the money. He was like that, you yeah, know. Yeah. It was like saying like his mate was asking, "Where the fuck are you?" Oh, yeah. in football for four months, you know. But, um, oh fucking hell! Yeah, still game one of the best, uh, one of the best sitcoms in general of all time. I would just say Scot- Scotland, obviously. Yeah, it's probably the best sitcom of all time. I mean, it's two and a half men's got to be up there. Mm-hmm. Before Walden Schmidt, before Aston Gutcher. Yeah, yeah, they kind of they messed up there because what like that's when Charlie Sheen went through his mental phase, really, wasn't it? The Charlie Sheen blood. started drinking tiger blood and shit, and yeah. then he went mad. I don't care, I still love him. Because they, they kind of teased him coming back at like the finale, and it was like a yeah, massive then, troll, wasn't it? Wasn't and then it, like at the it? end, fucking the, the, a piano on their own. <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like Chuck Lorre, I mean, brilliant. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's him at the, the Big Bang Theory. Is it not? 
Yeah, was he not like the director or something on it? Or he was like some kind of writer? Or Someone, yeah. I don't know. But yeah, brilliant. I mean, under otherwise. But yeah, two and a, I don't think he can actually beat the whole game. I don't think anything has. I think you've got to be Scottish to get it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like if you're not Scottish and you're, say, you're from England. Yeah, from yeah. There'll be something that Anywhere, like you're, yeah, you're yeah. going to go, what, what, what the fuck is he saying? Yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, so. And even like, but, like it's mental, like the local kind of dialects and how they confuse people like someone from glasgow coming up here and for like a shock right? yeah how 100%. people speak like i remember going into glasgow must be like 10 years ago right and we got off at, um i got off at uh i think it's queen street station because it was just next to george square there's a taxi rank because you come out i know like they've renovated the station since or whatever it's probably different now but remember uh like so if you're on elgin high street for example you can go into any taxi on that taxi rank and just like, are you doing any runs? And they'll be like, uh, no, just hop in and Aye. drive off, right? Aye. But in like cities, it ter- turns out to be different. You want, you, they encourage you to go to the front one and yep. they just all move up, which makes sense, right? But I, because I'm accustomed to being up here, I just went to like the first one that I got and uh, the guy was reading a paper, right? <laughs> and uh, I, I just went, oh, are you, you on any runs at the moment, right? And the guy just turned around and was like, see that taxi fronties? I was like, Excuse me, <laughs> and he said it again in that, and I'm like, never mind. I just closed the door right, but I couldn't like understand it. It was just like really heavy glass weed, really like, fast. Ling- yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But it would be the same if like someone came up here and like someone from Glasgow, and they're like, "Oh, that's a nice sheen you've got." Aye, <laughs> like, what the well, fuck's it, that? it was funny, right? Because like I've like had people, like for example, um, I've got look, like, they're not kind of like family, but they kind of are. If it's hard to explain, but like my auntie and uncle. They're no longer married, right? Yeah. But, um, like his family still come up because, like, like my cousins are there, his auntie and uncle and all that sort of stuff. So, like, when they come up and stuff, like we're still close, like a family. Do you know what I mean? So, like, they talk quite heavy Glaswegian. I can understand them perfectly, but it's just because I'm used to it. Mm. But like when it comes to, say, they've met Forrester, for example. Yeah, yeah. Nobody can understand yeah. Scott Forrester. <laughs> Nobody can understand Scott Forrester, <laughs> and that's like he, he, uh, he. I mean, I don't even think people from up here can understand them. <laughs> I don't understand what like it's. I have a I have a hard time understanding them, right? And he'll tell you that himself. Like he, he, he can he speak so fast sometimes and so like like an old man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like an old man. Eh? Yeah, and uh, so I not even people from up here can understand them. His his younger brother Mikey that I was at school with, there's no one that will make me laugh as hard as that dude. Like I remember we'd been out drinking one night, right? And uh we're <laughs> probably shouldn't have named him in this, but fuck it, what the hell? Um <laughs> so we're walking home from um pub in Elgin and we're going to like uh, a mate's house and he was like really <laughs> he's like really drunk. And he was like, um, I'm going to knock at that. There was like a little window that was like, it was clearly someone's basement, right? So they had their house and they had a little window that was like in like a basement or something. Um, and you, you know what Mikey looks like? He's a very tall, tall guy, right? Very, very gangly and whatever. Um, and he was like, oh, I'm going to knock at that door. It will scare them because there was a light on, right? Uh, not, not door, sorry, window. I'm like, oh, no, fuck it. What are you doing? Just dinner, right? <laughs> and, and next thing you know, dude comes panging up the road like five minutes later. And he's like, we've got to go, we've got to go. I was like, why? He's like, I put my foot through the fire. <laughs> like, <laughs> you imagine just like watching your TV in the basement, this gangly ass foot comes through this like. But you got, I think you've got to see what Mikey looks like. To like, to appreciate it, that like, story. Aye. But he he was that drunk that he ended up, um, he end, we ended up blocking him in a dog cage. So, <laughs> fucking dog. That sounds like Mikey. Yeah. Mikey's then, still like that. But he, he what he did was, is like, when we were like youngsters, we had a bit of a bad habit of making prank calls. And what happens when you're fucking 17, 18, right? Um, I don't condone or anything, but like, fuck it, it was a long time ago. It's harmless, though, isn't it? Yeah, like, so he had, we had this random number and he just he phoned up and like, he hadn't, like, the, the reason that made this that funny because there was no like script, like, usually we would be like, oh, like, come up with something. But this random guy picked up, right? You could tell straight away just wasn't in the mood for fucking, like, any kind of, like, time-wasting. 
And Mikey went to him and was like, excuse me, sir, I'm here from some kind of website. He was like, if you can name 31 flavors of crisps in 31 seconds, you were in with a chance of winning 31,000 pounds. And went on this long spiel, right? I'm in absolute tears <laughs> with this. And he just went, ready, go. And it was just like silence. <laughs> like they call they like to go on top of it. He just went, I'm not hearing any crisp flavors. <laughs> and the guy was like, I'm not giving you any fucking crisp flavors. <laughs> oh, they were just so out of the blue. Uh, the last thing, I think the last time I was in a session with Mikey Foster was a while ago. Uh, he was standing at one side of the pool table, right? I was playing pool. Hmm. And I chalked my cue and I looked at, I can't oh, think of yeah, my you threw Scott, the chalk from across the room. Yeah. And I went to Scott, I was like, well, watch this. So I was like, I just launched the chalk right across the room. Boom, right into Mikey's pint glass. Jesus. And he just looked at me like, <laughs> like, what the fuck? I was like, I didn't think that was going to go yeah. in. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. And I still see, I seen him in Forest a few weeks ago, uh, not a few months ago, rather. Um, I mean, it's like, uh, mum was playing music and that, so I thought I'd, I'd done the night off, so I was like, oh, I think I'll go watch this, right? And I thought it would be like a big place. It turns out it was like, quite a small, like a brander size pub. Oh. Um, so like the, the way to get to the back was like really, really tight. Um, I was sitting in the back right and he was there and I got speaking to him and that. And uh, people were like, oh, you're coming out for a fag? But like, oh, like well, vape because I don't smoke anymore. But um, I was like, yeah, okay. And the the battle to get through to the door was ridiculous mm. and people weren't moving. Like, you know, most of the pub might have been on a bit of 1999. I'm not accusing anyone. I just know the signs. You don't need to go to the toilet three times in 15 minutes. But um, <laughs> uh so they got through right and I went to go through and like the kind of <laughs> the door closed again so I was like tapping people in the back and no one was like turning round or anything I was like right fuck this but then I was thinking how the fuck are we getting out later <laughs> you know what I mean I was like we can't make it to the door so I think I technically got banned from this place I went out the fire escape door sir I was like they're not keeping me caged in here I'm not going waiting like three hours because Mikey had came back from his fag, right? And this was funny. He got wedged in between two people and he was trying to get through. And then they like started like getting him in like this dance nudging thing. It was so crazy. But uh, one of the, the people that's playing music was right next to the fire escape door. I was like, right, obviously my chance. I've just got to take it. I'm getting out of here. Um, and I was like, okay, if I just go uh, through that. It was like, a, it was right around the corner from like the actual main entrance. So it yeah. wasn't like I was doing anything extreme. I was like, can I just quickly go out the fire exit door, save me having to like try and barge my way through like tons of people doing steaming and that. And they were like, um, yeah, I think so. Like, look, I'm kind of unsure. And there was a lady down in like the cellar or whatever it is in the pub where they go get beer and that. Um, and apparently it was like, as my like, my shoe just came through the door at the last second. I just heard, hey, is that your name allowed out there? And like, I got away. But um, I just, I think, I think I'm banned from that establishment for going out the fire exit. But it was really <laughs> weird because like, I'm right round the corner from the main door. No one's moving in the middle. You know, Do we not remember, Jenny? No, no remember, I don't have any plans of going back to the forest to drink <laughs> anyway. So it's a bit irrelevant, but yeah, a bit of Saturday night adventures and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but, no, um, if I, if I can't, if I can think of, I can't really think of anywhere I'd rather not go. <laughs> to go drink in the forest in the forest <laughs> and you get stopped or some shit to <laughs> my wheelchair wheels are getting necked for sure <laughs> uh, being the scrap by Monday but yeah and no, I like here talking about bets right you're talking about Lee Um, I remember I don't know if I told you about this but it was like when Rangers got um, put down the leagues mm -hmm. uh, Kruki and Nikki made a bet Mm. did I tell you this I think you told me this that, uh, Nicky said they wouldn't stop 10 in a row or something like that I, I, can't, th I can't remember I think yeah I think it was 10 yeah. in a row and I had the I wonder if I still got it on my phone because like Nicky looks so smug in this uh, <laughs> Nicky, uh, Nicky looks so smug in this um, photo like you'd have to see it to know what I meant uh, but I don't think I've still got it yeah I have Kruki and Nicky bet that Celtic won't get 10 in a row. Bro, and the, the bet was £100. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's the bet. Nicky looks like he's cashed that check already. <laughs> 2017. <laughs> right? So this is what, like four years before it actually... Yeah, I, yeah. I get a, I get a message from, uh, from Kruki saying, was it you that I was with when I made that bet with Nicky? We wouldn't win 10 in a row. Um, we wouldn't stop 10 in a row. Mm -hmm. And I went... Fuck, I don't know, was it? So I looked into my phone. I was like, give me a minute. Give me five minutes. See if I can have a look to see if I did make this, right? 
So I looked at my phone and I just typed on, going into notes and I just typed in bet. Boom, pop. Yeah, <laughs> first thing pop. And up. I'm like, holy fuck, that's still there. Yeah. So anyway, I sent it to Crookie. Now, I snapshot, snapshotted it, the date 2017. So obviously, I haven't edited that. So he thinks that I've, so, so he doesn't think that I've like just wrote it randomly. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I snapshotted it, sent it to Crookie, and he was like, Oh my God, thank you so much. I'm up 100 quid, right? <laughs> here's, here's from Nikki. Thumbs a fucking lot, j <laughs> I'm doing 100 pound. Well done. Thank you very much. And I was like, but you shouldn't have made that yeah. bet. I was like, because it was going to happen. Oh, so. I told you about the time about his uh, bet on Celtic in the, the Champions League qualifying stages. And he had them on to win 3-1. And uh, Celtic made it 4 1 in the 95th minute. I've never seen someone so disappointed <laughs> to see their own team score. It was ridiculous. <laughs> see, like, see, bet, see, when you're betting on actual, like, correct scores, mm-hmm. fuck now. It's brutal. Oh my God. See, when Japan went 2 1 up, there was like eight minutes to go. And I was like, even if Japan scored again, I'll lose all this money. So, yeah. like, can we just, like, end the game here? Yeah. And that's the longest eight minutes of your life when you're not. Like- yeah. I think, I think Ali, I was, because I watched the uh, Argentina game with Ali B. Cause he comes over a minor on that yeah, Sunday, yeah, yeah. and um, we were watching. It. I'm pretty sure I had a bet on. And I think it was like, was it two one? I think mm-hmm. he had on, and then they scored again. He was like, "Oh for fuck's sake!" <laughs> 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 I was like, "Yeah, that's why you shouldn't bet." Is he planning on coming back playing for Lossy? I think it just it, it's just on how well he how does. How he recovers, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, he's doing physio and stuff at the minute, so he's just trying his hardest to kind of get better as quick as possible. I mean, you don't want to rush through things again. Because uh, he did a, he had a little setback where he uh, he thought he'd hurt himself. But he's all right now. He's just kind of... It was just, nah, you he's know... he's got the surgery and stuff like that now, isn't he? Yeah. Because when you did a raffle at the uh, stadium and stuff for him. I was been down, to have a, been down to see a few games in right. recent months. So, uh, aye. Because he was doing some exercises and he heard, like, his knee pop. Jesus. And he was like... But it was just, like, the way he moved. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So like, but he shit himself. He was like, "What the fuck was that?" But then, but yeah, he's going to physio and he's just doing what he can do. So hopefully, he does get back. I'd like to see him get back, but I don't want him, and I don't think he's gonna into rushing things. Yeah, of course. That's when you start. Yeah, you, you don't want to mess him. Put like, yourself looking, back, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it affects his job as yeah. well because if you can't walk, you're f- he's fucked. He's a joiner. Do you know what I mean, you have to be able to walk. So. Yeah, it was affecting his job and stuff. So you had to get that surgery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's he's uh he was famous without knowing it as he was in football manager i remember sending you this screenshot That's someone right. someone sent me and he, he was like oh look who i found on football manager right because they were managing elgin city or something mm-hmm. and they signed him i'm like no oh, you've just like you've made the you've made him up or something was like, no he's in the database and i'm like what <laughs> and i know you're good mates from him so i said it to you I was like do you know that he's in like football manager yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah crazy man up. yeah so i think i did send him that I mean, it was just out of like nowhere because, like, obviously, Ali's played for Lossy for numerous amounts of years, obviously, before then. And I um, haven't watched, went to watch Lossy as well. I can tell you who's a fucking unreal football player is uh, Nicky's younger cousin, is it Bailey? Nicky's brother. Yeah, it's his brother, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Um, yeah, him playing for Lossy. He was, I went and watched Lossy beat Nairn 5 1, and he was really, really good. Yeah, Bailey's a good player. He's like his his big brother, Biscuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Biscuits was great as well, so. Yeah, um, yeah, Bailey's good. I remember going. I remember going like ten years beforehand and like seeing the uh, biscuits and that play. And there was a guy called Baggers as well. Don't remember him, but mm-hmm. uh, it was always those two. Some of the lossy games are hilarious. They're like banging on like the not the, it's not like fences, but it's like that stuff that's like rusted over. You know the you <laughs> yeah. know what I'm on about like people yeah, banging on that yeah, and stuff no, like yeah. that. Yeah, it's quality, bit, but yeah. uh, uh, been enjoying going to the games recently. And you can tell that like even at like I guess what you would call grassroots football. Has gotten like just another level over like ten years, and it's, it's mad because like you see the Highland League, right? And obviously Inverness were in it at one point, and they've ended up being in the SPL, and I think they're not in it now. They're in like the division below or whatever, and like Elgin City were in it, and they're in one of the kind of higher up divisions in that. But it always bugs me, and I know we're like we're like quite a small town. It always bugs me that like Lossy have never like won it. You know what I mean? Like the Highland. Yeah, League. there's just no. Um, I don't think you know there isn't any like money. I don't mm. think you know. I think money's a big issue. Yeah. I think if someone came in and bought Lossy and, and really fucking went to town with it, you know, like, um, you know, there's a lot of teams in the Highland League that are 
fucking rich. Yeah, yeah. Cove Rangers was so a big like one when you're it, trying it? to compete with teams that have money and you don't have money, it ain't happening. I don't even think Fort William exists anymore. Not the, the town obviously exists, <laughs> but the football team. Because I remember for years going to watch Lossie ten years ago, we'd get beat by everyone. But Fort William was the one you had to win because they were bottom and they beat no one. You know what I mean? They were the worst team. Yeah, I don't, think, them, I don't think they're even in the league anymore. So, <laughs> but they're not the worst team in Britain. I'm fucking sure I see it somewhere. <laughs> I'm not. I'm being serious. That's all. Yeah, that's yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I'm sure that was a thing. Yeah, worst yeah. team in Britain. Nothing yeah. against the poor boy. Here, it was. It was just, a, here, I like going to the games and watching Lossy. But almost, every game that I've been to, like, it's gave everyone a good game. You know what I mean? Like, I'm. I'm speaking of lugs. They go away to the fucking away games and stuff like that, and going to like breaking and shit like right. that. We even tend to give a good game. Like, I remember, you know, Ryan Farker who used to just bite up the road uh, here. He plays right back or something for them. And uh, there's a few people that I recognise. Farker's a good player. Yeah, yeah, very good player. He's always been good though. Mm-hmm. Uh, well. Growing up, and that he stopped playing for a while, and then he started again. Hmm. But yeah, it's good, good that he's playing again. So, but we, I mean, like, not a lot of people know this, but we, we've got a footballer that represented Scotland, and Stuart Imlach. I don't know if you ever know that name. He was my grandfather's best mate. Was he? And it was Nicky's uncle. Damn, because there's a street named after him, obviously. Im- Imlach, Imlach Way. Way, yeah, yeah. Imlach Way, he's got yeah. an FA Cup winners medal. I think it was with Nottingham Forest. Nottingham Forest, yeah, yeah. yeah. Forest. Got a cup. He was uh, Nicky's granny's brother, I think. Uh, so it runs in the family with Bailey and Biscuits and stuff so it runs in the family definitely hey, there's a book uh, about him uh, his son wrote it I think Gary I'm like, I think his name is he yeah wrote, no, no that's right yeah, yeah, yeah there's that, a book yeah. and my grandfather's in the book my grandfather was mentioned in the book but him and uh, Stuart were the best pals there's like there were th- there's loads of photos of them and there was a um, photo of them in the same because they played for at the time, the square had a football team. Mm-hmm. I think it might have been something to do with the church. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they all played there together and stuff. So they were brought up together and that. And obviously, Stuart went on and played great for, for great teams and yeah, yeah. did well. And then, but my grandfather, he went to the army. He could have went far. I think, you know, Everton wanted him for trials and stuff. Um, but back then, the money wasn't what it is no, now. Do you know what I mean? So it was like, different. But like, um, my grand's dad played, uh, when, they, when I say he played for Liverpool, he played for. He went on trial to Liverpool. He's, a, I believe, he's still the all-time top goal scorer for Bucky Thistle, which is unfortunate because the rivals have lost him. So, <laughs> um, uh, but I, there's apparently a picture of him. In, uh, I think I don't know if they have a museum or something. I remember I was meant to go see this one time, but something happened where I had to cancel or something. But uh, he got him and his best mate, who also played for Bucky Thistle. And this shows like we're talking about even playing fields. Like, do you even think that someone from the Highland League would like go on a trial? Like a club like Liverpool, for example, or Everton, like you mentioned, like it's just it's unthinkable now. Yeah. But back then, it was quite a common occurrence, right? Because everyone mm-hmm. was on like uh, the same kind of uh, money and trajectory and how football clubs were running that. And uh, him and his mate went on trial, and I can't remember. I think it was someone like someone Alexander, maybe Graham Alexander or something. His mate's name was. But my my grand's dad, he didn't play football until he was eighteen. And then he just decided that he wanted to play that and then was like banging goals in for Bucky Thistle in cool. the 1940s like it was going out of style. And obviously this is before Liverpool obviously went on to win multiple European Cups and become one of the biggest teams in the in the world. Um, he went on trial there and I'm, I'm just noticing how he's, det- he's playing for all the rival teams that I support. Um, here, uh, But they went on trial in Liverpool and both of them got offered a contract. I believe his mate ended up taking them up on that and played for Liverpool. But he didn't want to move away because he had a young family at the time and obviously like you just mentioned there the money wasn't like it wasn't like no. life changing money at the time and stuff but um, when he <coughs> passed away in the 90s the current uh, Liverpool squad sent him a signed shirt so there would have been the likes of like Robbie Fowler probably a young Steven Gerrard and that there's cool. a shirt signed with all these I'm yet to see it uh, one of my one of my nan's family members has it I think they're through in Aberdeen I'm, I always wanted to go and see it, even though I'm a United fan or whatever, <laughs> like yeah. I've always it's just good memorabilia. Do you know what I mean? And it's like when I because I when I was speaking about he's got dementia now, so like he can't remember much. But like when I was speaking to him about it and that he was like, um, when I was in the army, when I got offered to go contract, well, when I got offered to go trial, they were wanting to sign him, but they just wanted him down there very yeah. much. And he was like, well, he was in the army at the time, and he couldn't really just kind of go. The money wasn't great, good enough for him to say, yeah, okay, cool. He was getting to play football in, in the army all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day. Mm-hmm. He was like, I would sit there, the wireless would be on at the side of the pitch. 
be listening to the radio and I would just be playing football all day. Yeah. In yeah. the army. He was getting paid to play football in the army. I yeah, like, yeah. I was like, that's probably the best deal anyone's ever had in the army. And it, it, that stuff still kind of goes on to this day with some things. Like we had Fraser Wilkinson in. By the way, congratulations, Fraser, for becoming Scottish champion. Recent weekend, won in front of uh, Elgin Town Hall and uh, went to a dominant victory. So much congratulations on that. Um, that. That's one thing that I've like been astounded at, is like, the combat sports athletes in this area, how high level they are. I know that sounds quite ignorant, but when no, we but had... they are, that's Yeah, true. exactly. Yeah, like, true. When, like, you know, Aiden's trying to get in the UFC, you know, like he's close to like Cage Warriors titles. He's fought like high level dudes. Um, Smarty, who we had on, he's fought Josh Taylor, who's the fucking world champion boxer. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And uh, Fraser, like, you know what really shocked me about Fraser? And I'll, I'll just be straight up honest here. So Fraser's like a, still quite a really young dude. He's like 21, 22. I've never seen such a young person with their head so screwed on and so focused. And I could just tell, he's obviously a confident guy, um, which I think you have to be in that kind of sports anyway to, to get anywhere. But like, they can't he, believe in yourself. Isn't exactly. Like, he's talking about he wants to fight for titles at like Borough Briggs and stuff like that and I believe him do you know what I mean I believe that that's going to happen and it was good because they brought the the show to Elgin which is money's an area that it's you don't associate with that type of thing like we were saying me and Lee were saying to uh, Fraser that this is the biggest sporting event that Murray could have outside of like Celtic or Rangers coming up to play Elgin or something of that nature and you know I can't even imagine that feeling like winning in front of all your friends and family, that kind of prestige. And he's, I believe he's going to go far, like having met him and, um, and that. And obviously he's a, he's a terrific boxer and stuff like that. Obviously there's some research into him before he came on and stuff, but it's good to see local guys doing well, you know? Yeah, it is. Especially like in an area that, <clears throat> that me and Lee were talking about it. It's, I think we appreciate it more because like, if it's people from Glasgow or it's people from big cities, there's so much people doing different stuff that like, you, you kind of expect that from, when someone's doing really successful from here, you just people get behind, get behind it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, you kind of see like how close the the communities are really, do you know what I mean? And you just kind of like, well, he's one of us, do you know what I mean? So mm. we're going to support him all the way and play it as well. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, like, well, I've got like a couple of minutes left here, but it's been, a, it's been a, it's been a good year, man. It really has like, there's been points this year where like I've been stressed and there's been other projects and stuff and worrying for the future and all that kind of stuff that comes with, with life. But when I when we started this in like 2021, I couldn't have even imagined like what the arms and legs that were going to be added to this and, and what it's became. And I thoroughly enjoy it every time and enjoy the editing process. The only part that I don't enjoy is the uploading because it is literally just like waiting, you know what I mean? But like... I've made like certain contingency plans for that where um for example if it's just like hosts like me, you or me, you be me, you Paul, whatever it be, if it's just us speaking, I'll obviously upload the video onto YouTube because it's a video platform anyway, but I'll use the audio on Spotify. But if it's a guest, I'll have the video on both and things of that nature. Um looking forward to the holidays. Quite excited for the new year. I've got a few things planned. Um I mentioned previously that I'm hoping to go to I guess what would be called film school um, next year. But even if that does happen, I'll still keep this going. I will find a way. There is Zoom. There is ways to do this. I've been, um, I, I guess, like the the kind of overall feeling I have is, you know, you know when you like you get stressed about the here and now or what things are going to come along the line, you can't actually forget where you've where you've like came from and how far you've come in that, and you kind of get blindsided by that. It's it's cool to look back. I was looking at some of the like early episodes and that the other day and just seeing like the presentation of it and what like what goes into it now and I mean we've always enjoyed talking, do you know what I mean? Like it's uh it's good, it's it's onwards and upwards, man. I'm good at speaking shit. I'll yeah. you know. <laughs> any time, any place. <laughs> any fucking time, I'm Well that was the thing, right? Like, um do you know what? Because we're having an honest time here, so I, I said there's been a lot of cancellations. This is episode 69, by the way. It just had to be, right? It was fake <laughs> that this episode would be 69 because it was meant to be 71. Giggity. <laughs> okay. It was meant to be 71, but Christmas, everything just seems to get cancelled, right? So I had, um, we had a getaway uh, booked uh, for a mate's wedding anniversary, right? And then everyone kind of uh, had plan and not plans, but like had stuff happen and had to pull out and that. So that never ended up happening. Me and Paul were meant to do our first podcast on the 
uh, on the road there because I've got the the power bank, so that doesn't need to be connected to stuff and whatnot. And then the guest that we were meant to have on, which I teased last time, I'll just say who it is because they've pers- we're having them on in January. It's Richard Lockhead, right? Um, I kind of feel like I've just named someone in a super injunction there, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> Uh, we were meant to have him on and that was because I've been really eager having put money into the power bank and getting the ability to actually do stuff on the road of actually getting to use it I haven't been able to do that yet but hopefully I think it's January 16th we're going there and then January 20th we're speaking to a personal trainer in Forest as well Lee's been killing it with getting the guests sorted and I have to shout out uh, there for keeping me up to date with that side but I've got things planned in that and um, sure you do as well with the music and stuff like that as well yeah um, just yeah I mean the thing is with me is that I just like keep writing and writing and writing right and then I think oh, I'll take that song out put that one in then it's like well should I do that should I do that should I because I've got enough for like mm-hmm. I don't even know how many albums yeah you've mentioned this before you've got a really good stockpile of, of uh, songs <laughs> yeah it's, it's like just... a it's like a fucking vault yeah it's like, you know, like Prince had a vault and he's got... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's kind of like that. It's like, I've got that much stuff, you know. But I'm just kind of trying to get to the point where I need to get... Uh, I need to find the right place to record and mm-hmm. I need to find the right person to mix it and stuff. Yeah, definitely. It's, so it's that's what that's what taken so long. Um, I, You know, there's a lot of people that are, you know... Because if you go and see, like, okay, this person... Is is uh, is good at what they do, but you've got to pay them to see that sometimes, hmm. and you don't. And then that's more money that you say, "Oh, well, he's not doing it as well as I wanted him to do it." Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. it's not like he's not doing it as well. He's just not. It's just my taste. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just not what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you still have to pay them the for music, their time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, so yeah, it's just getting all that right because I'm not going to release something if it ain't right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And that's the whole point in being, you know, because it is your. Um, it's your project, your work, isn't it's it? It's my vision, do you know what I mean? That's yeah. exactly what I can see, what I can hear, because I can hear the whole song in my head while writing it. Mm-hmm. I can hear the bass, I can hear the drums, I can hear everything, I can hear literally everything. So I know how it's supposed to sound, so it's just trying to get it to come out the speakers, that's the hard part. Yeah. But once it's there, it's done, then, yeah. I can it, and then it gets easier, because you, you know, once you've found a sound engineer, then you can just go to them all the time, you know what I mean? You can work with them and establish a relationship and... You know, I was talking about this as well because, like, on the podcast, I use copyright few, the free music. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, whereas we were talking about once you release music and that would be cool, have a little bit of a, a guitar solo or a rift or whatever is like the oh, intro yeah. music for this. That would be that would be uh, uh, cool. And obviously, like, it's quite hard to find copyright free. Well, it's not hard to find copyright free music. It's hard to find the right copyright free music. Yeah, for it to somehow, sound, yeah, 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 to make yeah. it sound like it's like an intro or, or something like that. Like even with the documentary, we use like Creative Commons, which having done the ac- editing accreditation, I now all know what this kind of um, code means. Like so, Creative Commons, you can use it as long as you don't make money off of it. So and there's a chance. I don't know if this is this is not guaranteed, but the documentary might be getting shown in Elgin Cinema at some point to the point where we might actually. Be able to make a, I don't know, money off of that'd it. That'd be fucking cool. That would be cool, but that'd we'd, be have cool to, fuck. we'd have to take the music and replace it because the Creative Commons would mean we couldn't make money off of it. And obviously, I'm not trying to say I want to make money off the documentary, but you know, like obviously, when you put that amount of time into stuff and that, you do. If it happens, it happens. Yeah, you know exactly, I mean? That's yeah. like the way you look at it, but that'd be cool as fuck to see that in the cinema. Yeah, right? yeah. I, I would, I, it would be fucking surreal, mate. Like, that would be cool. Yeah. I'm getting the suit out and everything for that. But like, knowing well. that you, you know what I mean? Like, you started with nothing and then you've got. Yeah. Like, it's in the fucking cinema yeah. like that's pretty well like even like doing the ed- editing accreditation which took like what two months and that was like me going out every day repeating I, I think I mentioned like the did I tell you about the exam we'll end it on how I did the exam right because the exam was very strange so I did it through a website called Certiport right it's an international learning provider I think it's based in America right right so the exam was at 12 at night and right. it was it was in the house right so I did it via uh laptops in front of us um and i was really worried about like the internet connection like cutting out or something like that so i had like the wi-fi booster and the ethernet cable and all that and the the setup process for getting into one of these tests mm. is that you've got to show your driver's or your identification and driver's license in this case um 
your mobile number in that. So I had to show it to like the computer screen and take photos of it and then it would send it over and then they would get a, what we'd call a proctor, uh, someone that is watching you through the screen. I didn't see them once, I just heard them through my laptop for a brief period. Right. But it's someone watching you during the test to make sure you're not like cheating or having An answers. examiner. Yeah, exactly. Um, so the, uh, it was in my mum's room, like she's got a desk so I could set up. So I was there and I was waiting. I was quite nervous because like, it's probably going to be someone from America or something. It's just going to be a bit strange. It's 12 o'clock at night. I had like <laughs> five coffees to keep myself awake. And I was like, do I know this symbol correctly? And all this type of stuff. And then I was like, just relax. You know what I mean? You've done as much studying as you can. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Um, and they started speaking. I was like, this is a bit uh, weird. I'd never seen them once. And they were like, is it okay if you show me your desk again? And I was like, right, I'm going to have to unplug everything because I would have to pick the computer up to show them. <laughs> see the, the the awkwardness of having to pick up a computer. Why the fuck did they want to see the desk? To make sure that there was like no notes or it was, it was a clear desk. There's no like an iPad. So yeah. So you can cheat. Yeah. Right, cool. Um, so, but it was like difficult to get it like, like the angle. <laughs> like me with the laptop, like half 12. And I was like, can you see it? You can um, be easy if you cheated. Yeah, yeah. Easy. Mm. But they, they I would have thought it would have been harder. They would have not. They wouldn't let me start until they'd seen the entirety of the desk. So that took about five minutes. And then they were happy with that. And then they were like, okay, the exam's about to start. So I was plugging like my mouse in that back in because I don't know if anyone's like edited without a mouse, but I don't I don't recommend it. Um, so I went to go put my mouse back in and the ethernet cable and all that. And just because my head had like moved out of shot for a second, they were like, can you please put your head like in the middle of the camera, please? And I'll go... Sorry, like, you know, I did say I had like to proper, unplug. like an authority. Yeah, of. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was weird because, like, when I was doing the test, um, in this little box, it had like a picture, of my my face through my web camera with like a record button. So I don't. I think they must obviously keep their footage in America somewhere. Yeah. And um, it's weird how the Americans do tests because, like, so a test over here it would be out of ten, out of twenty, how many questions, mm -hmm. how many tasks. Over there, it's a point system. Right. So. The test ends, right? There was one thing, I was pretty confident about everything. There was one thing that I'm, like, I forgot about and I was like, I don't know how to do this because it's a time thing. So it was about 50 minutes to do the whole thing. So there's like a question section. It's kind of like, you know, the driving theory test, you get the questions and then you get like the hazard perception. Yeah, yeah. So like it was the questions about what I was doing and then actual doing like stuff in the software. Right. So it would be like, you know, like hazard perception is trying to simulate you right. as a driver and what to look yeah, out that, for. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, I finished that and um, uh, so it came at the end and then it took me to another page and it just was like red and I was like, oh shit, red means fail. And then stopped, then looked at the point system and I think it was like 800 or whatever it needed to be. It was like 890 and it was like, fucking get <laughs> there's like a picture there's like a video of me going yes in front of it <laughs> but yeah it's been a good year man it's been a good year it's a pleasure as always talking to you and um this is this is it merry christmas happy new year to everyone at home and here's uh, to the next year until the next year we'll be back in like a month or something um unless you see that uh christmas special video on facebook and the whole thing gets cancelled because <laughs> it is quite brutal but um if not all the best to everyone and uh i'll see you in the new year my friend yep see you later on